Good. Hey, how are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Good. You must be so thrilled that your show, Heartstopper, is going to be coming out in just a couple of days. I know. It's literally, it's, it's been a long time coming, to be honest. Honestly, from the, the moment we got announced, which was, I think, actually just just under a year ago today. And um, yeah, it's honestly been every day just counting down the days. Um, we're so excited for it to come out. Yeah. So I'm curious because you said you, you had heard about this project. And you didn't actually audition for the role that you ended up getting. You were you were not going to be um, trying yeah. it for Nick originally. So first of all, how did you know about this project? Did you have familiarity with the graphic novels? And secondly, how did you fall into this role? Sure. I mean, so I knew of the graphic novel series. So my sister um, actually had the first the first volume in her like bookshelf. So I, I knew of the um, of the series, but I hadn't actually read it. So then when I got this this email through from my agent about, you know, this project and to audition for the role of Charlie, I was I was obviously, you know, keen to obviously read the first volume because they sent through a link. Uh, so I read the first volume as soon as I got that email. You know, it's so easy to read. It's so sort of like nice to read in general. So you know, I got through that really quickly and was just like, yeah, I really want to be a part of this. You know, it's such a it's such a, like a new kind of thing to have this kind of queer representation for this demographic that don't really get that much queer representation. So I think, you know, immediately I was like, yeah, this is something that, that would be really like important to be a part of. But yeah, I mean, I, to be honest, I didn't think I'd get that far because, you know, I was obviously auditioning for, for Charlie and I don't know, you know, whenever I tell people that they, they quite quickly get quite, confused really because I don't resemble Charlie at all there's literally no resemblance there so it would have been an, an odd fit if I was cast as Charlie but um yeah I think quite quickly they realized yeah maybe this guy might be a little bit better for Nick um and yeah I mean from then on it just sort of just sort of happened and I was yeah so excited to be able to just like be a part of it and bring it to life did you previously have the athletic the rugby background well, I, I when I was very young, I, I was in a rugby team and I used to play a little bit of rugby. I don't think I was especially good, but I was just, you know, I just had a little bit of fun. But um, yeah, we, we had some rugby training sessions and things like that. So sort of get me back up to speed. But I, I knew how to throw the rugby ball. So, you know, that was that was really that was the hardest bit done. So what I think is so incredible about your show is that it really is a show you feel. You know, it's not like a, a show you watch. Hmm. I, I had a lot of moments. I had a lot of goosebump moments. A lot of, I think I cried at the end of it. It just, it, it feels so um, it, it enveloping. So what's it like to make a show like this? I mean, I'm so, yeah, so such a lovely thing to say. I mean, it's, um, it was a really like sort of passionate experience for everyone. I think everyone who was involved was really happy to be there and really like keen to be there. And they all really wanted to bring the story to life because I think it sort of meant so much to everyone, you know. Um, it was a very inclusive crew, you know, cast and crew. So really everyone on set knew the importance of the show um, and felt that it, it certainly had so much potential to be important to a lot of people and, 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 you know, do a lot of good. So, you know, to be involved in it and to be able to, to do that was amazing. And yeah, I think it, I think it is very much one of those shows that it does involve, you know, the audience quite a lot and it, it, it sort of draws back on nostalgia and, you know, it's very relatable. There are certain moments that, you know, especially in the LGBTQ plus community, you know, for example, you know, discussing your sexuality with your, with your, your mum or your dad or you know, your friends. I think that's such a, a relatable moment that that can really kind of tug on the heartstrings just because you know it's it brings you back to the moment when when you were there and you were in that kind of in those shoes um so yeah um i read that it was so um incredible that the author of the books is involved not only on the show not only you know producing the show but involved in so much of it you know from yeah. right from the casting decisions and how important it was too that you had actors that were actually the age that they would be yeah. portraying. And I think for you, you said you were even still in school at the time. 
I'm I am still in school now. And still I'm in like, school yeah. now. Yeah. So you're I'm, not, you know, not 20 and 30 year olds playing 18 year olds. Exactly. You, exactly. you had just turned 18 years old. So, you know, it must yeah. it, that that aspect alone must feel like so refreshing. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think I think, like you said, to have Alice there, the the, the writer and illustrator of the novels and, and obviously to write the script as well was so, so important because I think often with with things like this, that adaptations of, you know, graphic novels or novels, the author can kind of be left in the background and 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 lose a bit of control and therefore it can kind of veer away from the story and the original kind of the 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 base material. Whereas having Alice there just meant that any time there was anything, you know, any kind of decision to be made that was about the story or about the characters and casting and things like that. And Alice had so much control. And I think that really helped us keep that heart of Heartstopper, you know, no pun intended, but, but, you know, keep that heart in there. Um, and I think that, yeah, I mean, also, you know, both Joe and I, we play Nick and Charlie, you know, are both still in school. And, you know, I just turned 17 just after I got the role. Um, and, you know, I've, I've just turned 18 uh, you know, last month and, you know, it, it makes it a lot easier to, for the audience to believe that we are students because we actually are. And it makes it a lot easier for us as actors to you know, perform as students because, you know, we, we are. So, um, yeah, I think it's I think it's refreshing for the audience and refreshing for us as actors as well to be able to play these kind of roles. So much of the show is sort of the contrast. You know, you and mm. Joe are, are extremely different. And yet, you know, your scenes play out so well. I had seen you at events with him and with Sebastian as well, too. So, you know, what does bringing in these actors, how does that sort of affect your performance? Well, I think that one of the greatest things about us as a cast is that we all get on so well. You know, we're all literally so close and, you know, it almost feels like we are like a family. You know, there are, there are so many in the cast. Uh, people like Joe and people like um, Bash or Sebastian, um, people like you know Will Gao and and like I mean, that's just a, everyone in the cast. Like I've I've gotten so close with them all, and you know it makes it so much easier to play that on screen chemistry and and in some ways actually play that um, the opposite. You know there are some characters where you know we, my character doesn't really see eye to eye to them, and, you know, um, and yet we get on really well off offset. You know. You know, me and Bash, me and Will, I'm really close with them. And yet it, it's actually quite fun to then be on screen and sort of not play enemies, but yeah, basically play enemies. So yeah, I mean, I think that, I think it all contributes towards the chemistry. Um, and Nick and Charlie, that is really the heart of the show. And, and without that base relationship being believable and being real, then it wouldn't quite work, I don't think, you know. So I think it was really important that Joe and I, you know, got on and, 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 and were close and felt comfortable with one another. And I think that we were just lucky that that was the case, you know? This is the kind of show in which the smallest moments are the biggest or make the most difference. So, you know, when you're filming and when you're watching it, what are some of your favorite moments on the show? I mean, I think that there are so many like wonderful moments. I think that, um, you know, one moment, for example, you know, like you just said, there's a moment, uh, which is also in the trailer, actually, where we're sitting on a sofa and um, Charlie's asleep and then Nick sort of hovers his hand over Charlie's sort of almost thinking about holding it. And then there's like sparks that are animated on um, and it's just this sort of warm glow. And, and I think that that is very much like it's one of those little moments that is just almost life changing for, for Nick. It's this sort of overwhelming feeling of you know um doubt and confusion and you know like what's going on suddenly I'm feeling these 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 incredible like passionate strong feelings um and I think that's a beautiful moment I I, I mean I think there's also a lot of great moments that are, are really raw and really sort of stripped back and and very emotional both between you know Nick and Charlie and for example Nick and his mom and 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 Charlie and Tori and and you know Tori's his sister and I, I think that yeah lots of really raw emotional um scenes which you know considering it is a very positive very sort of um optimistic show I think it's it's nice to have these moments as well yeah mm -hmm. and that there's such a passionate fan base 
And you must have been, I mean, I can see already you're getting responses. The show hasn't even aired yet. What what is yeah. what are you what are you excited for for the for the fans of Heartstopper and the new fans to discover on the show? Well, I think that that's it. From the minute we got announced, Joe and I and, and the rest of the cast as well, I think, you know, it was it was amazing. It was this flood, this rush of, you know, support and and sort of yeah, just just happiness really. It was it was amazing. And um yeah, I mean, we're so excited for them to see what we've made and, and hopefully they like it. And especially the fans who were fans of Heartstop of the, the, the graphic novel series before, hopefully we've done it justice for them. And, you know, obviously for a lot of them, it's, it's meant a lot to them. So hopefully they feel like we've done it justice and we've, you know, um, we've done it with care because we have, you know, we, we put a lot of time and effort and care into these, these, um, these characters and, and these stories. And yeah, I, I think that's my main hope is just, I, I hope they like it really as simple as that. So you've been acting for a long time, you know, started when you were eight. You've had some incredible experiences. I think you were on the Quasette and Cannes twice, I believe you had two movies at Cannes. Yeah, I did. I had two movies in, in I think 2019. Yeah, so I had two movies at, uh, in one year, yeah, which was, which was very cool, yeah. Yeah. But even, even so, you know, let's say that there was um, a, a very, like a lion of cinema and television that happened to be involved in one of your projects, you maybe feel a little, I don't know, uh, not starstruck, but just amazed by being in their presence. I think absolutely. I think that if that were the case, then it would be, you know, a, an unbelievable sort of experience as an actor. I think, I think that no matter how many times you work with, with you know, really incredible sort of famous and, and well-respected actors it never quite makes it feel normal when you when you get to work with with more and and you know um for hearts to probably got to work with an extremely talented actress um who is so effortless and so talented and so well respected and you can just immediately tell just from working with her it was a real honor to be able to do any kind of scene alongside her, especially a scene as sort of emotional as some of the scenes that I did do with her. Um, and yeah, I think it's an honor that any actor, you know, that's presented with it, it, I think any actor would feel so honored to be able to do a scene like that. And um, yeah, it, it would never feel normal, ever feel normal to, to, to do a scene like that with, with, with someone like that, but yeah. So, you know, this show is such a game changer for you, but you know, even though you've you've had that experience and this show, I imagine, will change everything for you. What is something that you'd like to do upcoming? What are what are some roles you haven't had a chance to take on? Well, I think very much like Nick is such a positive, such a like a warm role. Um, I, it would be very interesting, I think, to to play someone a bit darker, a bit more sort of twisted, a bit more, you know, just generally the other side of the the spectrum really and that would be I think I think those roles are always really interesting to play you know you get some of the most iconic roles in cinema that are roles like that you know um Jack Nicholson in The Shining you know Heath Ledger's Joker all these kind of roles that are so like psychologically interesting and intriguing and and sort of slightly twisted and and darker yeah I, maybe someone a bit meaner I think possibly um but yeah, I mean, I, I do love playing Nick, so I'd love to play Nick again, but yeah. One of the things I found so incredible is, you know, how uh, the discussion was to make a show that felt authentic, felt British mm. too. You know, this is yeah, such a, yeah. a British show that it, you know, that it didn't have that transatlantic feel to it. So, sure. you know, what, in and also that, you know, Netflix has this incredible reach that, you know, the show will be seen mm. everywhere around the world. So, you know, what did you feel like on this show was sort of authentically British? And also, you know, how do you feel that people will be seeing it everywhere? I mean, I think one of the most authentically British parts about it is the fact that obviously we are all very British people, you know, um, the cast and crew were all, you know, from, you know, the whole cast are very British people. I'm very British, you know, like Bash is very British. You know, like, we're all very British, which is, which helps. Um, I always say that one of the most British parts of the show is that like everyone keeps on saying sorry all the time. I think that's a, a bit of a stereotypically British thing. And, and we definitely, you know, Charlie especially does that so much, just constantly apologizing. 
Um, but I think that it, it has also got that sort of more, you know, there are certain things like, for example, there's like the kind of milkshake, there's a triple date where, where they will go for a milkshake. And, and um, there are certain elements that are almost like a kind of old fashioned um, Hollywood romance kind of film. Um, you know, going for a going for a milkshake date, or or going to the arcade and things like that. It's it's got that sort of slightly, still very, you know, British yet kind of rom like romance kind of vibe. Um, and I think, like you said, with the with the whole thing about Netflix and their reach is is incredible. You know, we've especially fans and like you know fans of 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 Netflix and Heartstopper in Brazil are extremely extremely passionate and, and vocal and and you know it's so special to to hear from them and it's amazing the, the amount of reach that Netflix has and you know I think it's it's incredible as actors the the whole cast sort of seeing the whole world you know observing the show and it does make it that we're sort of so keen for them to just all see it and you know see if they like it see if it's as good as they they hoped it would be but yeah I mean that's one of the great things about being able to do a show on Netflix is just even a show like Heartstopper which feels to us very much like a sort of our little show like it feels didn't feel like a, a big Netflix production when we were making it just because it just felt very intimate very real um, and it, it's crazy that suddenly it's going to be sort of out to the whole world yeah that's really incredible. Well said for that. Um, I think it's a great show for Netflix as well, too, in that, you know, as you were saying, intimate, but it feels like, you know, we'll, we'll feel it on a grand, a grand scale. Mm. And I don't know if they've ever had sort of a show or a project like this, but curious for you as a viewer, you know, what would your Netflix queue look like? What kind of things have you been watching? Well, I mean, I watched loads of different things on Netflix. You know, it's... um. Obviously, you know, it's the sort of classics like, uh, you know, Stranger Things and Sets Education. And um, I watched Top Boy recently. Yeah. Um, we've got someone in, in Heartstopper called Aroloyne who's who plays Stefan in, in, in Top Boy. And, and yeah, he's, he's great in that. And I think it's a great show. And, you know, things like Bridgerton as well. I think there are so many just hits. You know, and that's to name a few. I, there are so many that I can't even sort of remember you know they're escaping me but but yeah I mean there's so much so much on Netflix they make so much great stuff like so much great content um but yeah I, I hope that that Heartstopper goes on on everyone's queue as well that would be that'd be nice yeah and we touched upon this a little bit I'm curious about it because you know a lot of times a show like this is a game changer personally because you know you have a lot of fans already and I imagine people that have that have followed your career but even more people reach out after this you know there's like all it's almost like a moment where it's like okay everybody's starting to react what what do you feel about that have you had a favorite fan moment have you had a favorite fan encounter I mean I think that you know it's 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 extremely overwhelming the this whole sort of new world, this new experience. Um, and it has sort of slowly built up throughout my, throughout my career, you know, sort of getting a little bit of fan appreciation and things like that. And then to do a show like this where the fans are so passionate and so, you know, excited and supportive is, is, is amazing. But um, yeah, in terms of like fan moments, I mean, it is always very special when it's, for example, when it's your birthday and, you know, all of these, these, these Heartstopper fans and, you know, just they, they all like, for example, make a, a, a big sort of compilation video of people, you know, wishing you a happy birthday and things like that. I think that's a, a, an extremely powerful, you know, very overwhelming experience as, as a person, you know, to have all these people sort of sending you their love and things like that. And um, I think that's a wonderful thing. And, and, you know, if Heartstopper does any eh, does well and, and and people like it, then then I suppose that that it, there's more of that kind of stuff to come. That it's a, it's just an overwhelmingly, especially the Heartstopper fan base is overwhelmingly positive. It's very like supportive, and they just they're just they're really nice, you know, and they they really just love love the novels, and hopefully they love the the show as well. 
So I have to ask you about this because, you know, I've seen video of you playing the piano, you know, you're, <laughs> or, or trying to play the guitar again. You said the guitar is something you're still kind of figuring out. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, after playing, after playing a, um, a, a young Reginald Dwight, a, a younger Elton John, you know, certainly music has to be something that is within your life, you know, that you're playing, listening to music. And, you know, in a show like Heartstopper, the, the soundtrack, the, 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 it just has such an incredible feel to it. So, you know, yeah. have, what, what kind of music have you been listening? What have been the songs that have been inspiring you? I mean, I do love music. I love, you know, I, I, think, I think for me, music is a very interesting thing because my music taste varies massively. You know, a, a lot of the, the time I'll be listening to things like sort of 70s, 80s rock and pop, you know, kind of like Elton John and David Bowie and Queen and, and, and musicians like that. And, and obviously from the 60s, like the Beatles and things like that. Um, but I think that, that Heartstop has this amazing sort of amazing ear for music in a sense, because, you know, we've got like Baby Queen, for example, and she's written us, um, she's written us some like, you know, original music for the, for the show. And, and we've got like a score and there's so much just really, there's so much personality in the music in Heartstopper and watching it without the music compared to with it is so incredible. Like I remember watching some of the scenes um, before they had music added to them. And it was like, you know, it was just the scene. And no matter how good the scene is, it's never going to be quite as good as when you have, you know, these songs that are specially fitted just for these scenes. And I think it definitely just adds a lot of character and personality to the show. Um, um, and I think that, honestly, for me, I'll be just playing the, the Heartstopper playlist just constantly, I think, you know, because um, there are some really great songs. And, and Baby Queen is, is amazing. Uh, um, uh, she's, she's written a song called Colors of You for, for Heartstopper from Nick's perspective. Um, and it's a great song. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say thank you. And also just to let you know that even though I have watched the show, what you've been saying and some of your answers have really inspired me. So I think that that first day when it drops on Netflix, I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch it all over again. Well, thank you so very much. I really, really, really appreciate that. It was such a pleasure speaking with you and the best. Yeah, real pleasure. The best to you. Um, thank you, Jeff. And to you.